Hey, how you doing? This is Paul from Paul's Carts. I just wanted to bring in a little short video today. Um, set up this little presentation. Um, it's not going to be anything fancy. We're really not going to get into it. But uh, just kind of wanted to show you these uh, Trinity set heads. You guys are probably familiar with the Trinity set. You've heard Trinity set, probably the name before. And uh, what the Trinity set is, is... The three major power making components for your engine it's the head cam and the carb these three components control all the workings and flow and power capability of your engine so if you have a 212 a 225 a 236 a 266 whatever engine it is the head cam and the carb are controlling the power so it's imperative to have these three things talking to each other and designed to work with each other um, or you're going to be down on power and you're going to be down on power big time so we actually put this set together uh, about a year ago and it's called the Trinity set um, this set came through lots and lots of trial and error uh, years and research and development and uh, refinement of products uh, knowing what works customer feedback dyno time and experience on the flow bench with ports port designs seat angles um, valves uh, and you know just sizes of all of these in relationship and how they correspond with the camshaft and the carburetor that's being used for that size bottom end. Now you can get the Trinity set on the site, paulscarts.com, and it's available now. Um, if you are to buy the set, there's savings built into buying it as a set. You can also buy the head, the cam, and the carb separately on the site. Um, if you already have, say, the PK RPM3 cam, or if you already have one of the cylinder heads, um, the cylinder head is pretty specific to the set. Uh, and what the cylinder head is, is it has specific mods uh, done to it that uh, we tailor to fit the bottom end. So on the Trinity set head, it has the welded intake tube, uh, it has the uh, 3228 seats, um, and, it, and it has the, uh, it's all paired to the flow numbers that we derived for the bottom end. Now, when you buy the Trinity set, uh, we don't yet have the capability on our site to ask for your bottom end specs. Uh, I've been dealing with my web designer and we're trying to get basically like a uh, Q&A or uh, a checklist of some sort that you can go through and basically give us your bottom end specs. Uh, it'll basically say like what's your bore, what's your stroke. Um, you know if you're not buying the trinity set it might ask you what carb size you use and what cam size you use and just the information that we would ask you to send in an email or through the contact us button if you were buying a cylinder head we're trying to get that just built into the site so you can send that to us on every order we don't have to ask but as of now if you're buying a head or the trinity set uh, these things are best when made to fit the bottom end. A 212 or even a GX200 on a radical end um, has different bottom end requirements than a three inch stroker. That's obvious. Um, so putting those specs into actual dimensions for port size, cylinder head flow, port efficiency, um, you know, in and you know that's how we make our power here uh, that's part of it um, you know a lot of it went into you know we did a lot of testing to come up with the PK RPM 3 camshaft uh, real testing we took every cam we had and as a dealer we have 
tons of cams here. Um, you know, over the years of doing competitions and multiple, multiple thousands of builds, we've just developed parts. <laughs> lots and lots of parts uh, and stuff that we just have in boxes here. So we took every cam. We now have a dyno. We just got a dyno in recently, a Hewitt dyno. And we've been doing uh, lots and lots of research, let's just call it. And uh, we're going to be putting some videos out of that stuff. But, uh, you know, when we tested all the cams we had, um, we tested it in a 72 millimeter bottom end with a stroker, because that's kind of middle of the road. You know, it's not a 212, it's not a 3 inch bore. So we wanted kind of uh, the middle of the road. And a lot of people are running those 72 millimeter Tillotson blocks, so it's really a great testing platform. So we ran that with our head, the Trinity head, which has the welded intake tube, and uh, it has the upgraded spring package, all that good stuff, titanium retainers, the uh, you know dual coil springs, everything you need to really get these things uh, you know operating at their what we found to be the optimal range. I'm sure. Now this is just my experience. Um, I'm sure other people have their own combinations that they have put together, but this is the best we could find. Uh, so I'm not trying to put anybody else's stuff down. Um, you know, I, I could just speak from what we've found and what we've seen through our own testing. You know, uh, years on the flow bench, um, years on the dyno, now owning our own dyno. Um, so we have lots of in-house testing going on. Lots of, you know, we do, you know, cylinder heads every day. Um, at least one build a day, uh, unless it's something massive. But uh, we put out, you know, say a welded intake tube head here, or a Trinity set. We put out like one Trinity set a day. If it's a complete engine, that's a two-day build. Possibly three days on a big block. Maybe more if it's got balance, stroker cranks, and all this extra stuff. Really depends on the ticket, but... Over the years, uh, you can see how that adds up to thousands and thousands of builds. So it's real backed research. The Trinity set um, is the best we could find. Uh, the cam, when we did the cam testing, uh, we ran every cam we had. We took the best cam of that. Uh, then we went, we made three cams based off the best cam you know, uh, the, the valve timing, how many degrees after bottom dead center, did we, you know, open the exhaust valve, did we close the intake valve, we refined that, we made three more cams, we ran those cams, the best cam out of all the cams that ran through that, on that dyno, in that simulation, is the PK RPM3 camshaft, it's not just, it's not just parts put together, you can get lucky, put some parts together, and you can make some power I wouldn't call it good power but you can make what you believe is good power when you get those three parts that are built and flow tested and designed to work together um, you know they they work and uh, you know we have these things tuned to basically you know if you go in there and and you know you buy the Trinity set or you buy a head and you just put any any cam in there and any carb on there, you're going to be down on power. You buy the Trinity set and bring it to somebody else. They think they could do better porting. They touch supports or something like that. Or they think the carb is the wrong size or the cam is the wrong size. And they start changing that stuff. With a finger snap, you will be down on power. Big power. 5-7 horsepower loss. Just like that. Pow. Um, these things are tuned to a razor's edge. Um, the seat angles, the way they, um, you know, the, the way they disperse the, the fuel atomization off the seat cuts, um, the way, you know, uh, I've seen EC, uh, you know, I'm a dealer for EC, uh, have a couple of their products on the site, but they have a new cast cylinder head. I can show it to you here. Um, got six of them in. Just figured, hey, this is a cool product. Let me check it out. Um, probably in the future, in stock condition, 
you know, they're, they're decent, but for the, you know, almost $250, $300 that they're charging for it, it's just a, a, a rough, it's a raw casting, you know, it's not a finished product, they're meant to be finished, let's just say, and, uh, you know, there's a couple things I like, I'm not going to go into that on this video, but, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, dialing in cylinder head, uh, they really have to be very specifically done. Um, you know, when it comes to the seat and how the seat transitions from the seat into the bowl of the head, let me get something to point with. You see here, there's no ridge. This is a perfect radius. That's the any ridge right in this area. That ridge right there is worth two, three horsepower alone. Just that ridge. So, in all our heads, we have this all blended perfectly. There is no transition here. This is a perfect radius. What I'd say about this head, first of all, is it's got the wrong chamber shape. This looks like a chamber shape that we played with. Back in what I would call Gen 1 days or pre-Gen days. Um, by the way it looks, it almost looks like it might flow good. And uh, it might... You know, here's another thing. The, the flow bench can lie to you. The flow bench is not the do-all, end-all like people try to make it out to. Um... People use the, that use the flow bench often use flow. You don't really hear me speak about flow numbers that often. I say we make them flow to meet the bottom end. I don't quote flow numbers. People that quote flow numbers are trying to sell parts. It's become a flow number tailored market to the consumer. And they're, they're trying to start that as a trend in order to sell parts. Oh, this head flows this much. This head flows that much more. This head flows the most. Well, none of that matters if your engine doesn't need it. You're just going to end up with a big lazy port that can't fill the cylinder at high RPM. It doesn't work off scavenging. It's There's way more than a flow bench in porting. And a lot of the times, the way you think the air goes, if you think this port looks perfect and it looks like it should, most of the time that's not a very good port. Things that are aerodynamic usually don't look perfectly round. It's look, look at a wing. Look at an airplane wing. Does that look like, you know, how you would imagine air to flow? The, when they're landing and they want air to turn, they... They drop this fin in the back. This is something I just heard on another video. And, uh, you know, that changes the wind, that little fin. You know, you, you don't see anything round or anything back there that's, you know, it's usually the way you think the air is going to flow isn't the way the air is going to flow. So, in that regards, a flow bench helps, but the flow bench can lie to you. And the way it lies to you is, see how in this chamber, in the front, away from my thumb, over here. And see how in the back, back there, those are actually, most of the air, let me put this down for a second. I really didn't want to get into do too much detail with this head, because I'm going to do another video on it. But in these ports, most of the air is coming through right here and right here. This area right here is basically a dead zone. Does not need this big vanquishing area. This area down here shouldn't be this big. It should be tighter. What you're doing here is you're creating too much space between the valve and the chamber wall. That actually drops velocity in this area when exiting the valve and causes turbulence in a low velocity in this area which actually cause spiraling and uh, you know it's just it's 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 not speeding up the air or keeping the air going fast in that area 
it's it's too big in that area and you could see this big area versus that smaller area the way it dips down way past the plug like that it's not the best for flow um, doesn't keep the velocity moving past the valve to get it up and around the valve and out of the way and down into the cylinder the air comes right out of the valve and stops and then the air behind it backs up on top of it and it ends up working its way backwards down the port and if you actually drew a line from the port to the middle of the cylinder that's the area of the port that has the most flow anywhere outside that line any curve outside that line or curve down outside that line is going to be a low velocity area those areas can actually have flow going back up the port and curling around in those areas and slow down velocity so the flow bench won't tell you that so in some cases it's like almost like laying back the port in that area might show more flow but what's going to happen to the fuel when it comes out of there is the fuel the fuel comes down it smashes into this back wall here and if this isn't shaped right or you don't have the right amount of speed and uh, swirl coming out of there the, and if there's not enough velocity around the valve the, the fuel puddles right here and if you spray some liquid into here I mean I don't know how many years ago I, I, I built my first flow bench I built a flow bench probably four or five years ago I think I had posted uh, some older videos of it um, a couple of years after I built it when I was just trying to uh, find some information to upload onto YouTube and uh, even back then I was already looking for and observing um, how things worked in motion in the cylinder head. not just flow numbers but I would flow smoke through them and have these clear cylinders and be putting liquid through them and spraying dicum through them and looking at the um, and looking at the patterns on the head and I was doing that five years ago and uh, really you know just got better tools and more knowledge and you know the way you learn is by making mistakes I've made a lot of mistakes in this trade <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I've made mistakes um, done some things that don't work said some things in videos that you know aren't really the best way of doing things and uh, we've found new ways and by making those mistakes it just makes us better that's that's learning in learning you make mistakes um, but uh, this is the Trinity set I'm getting on a tangent now uh, this is the Trinity set we got the uh, the cams uh, this is uh, one of the special edition um, methanol carbs we have now this comes with the Trinity set so you got the head the cam and the carb um, these things are all matched to work together the research is there that's my opinion um, as far as what other people think works more power to them this is what works for us uh, so check them out on the website paulscarts.com website paulscarts.com you can contact us through the contact us button um, on the site there's a contact us button that's through site contact if you want to text or call you could text or call 781-492-7358 you can also email me you can the email address is paulscarts at gmail.com again paulscarts at gmail.com so I'm Paul this is Paul's carts this is the Trinity set it's available now on the site for sale so check it out check us out paulscarts.com I'm Paul's Paul's carts until next time guys have a nice day Max ported.